Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to be adding integers without using a number line today. We'll learn the rules, get some practice in, and that's what we can be expecting to do today. We'll have a short lesson, do some practice, and we do have a word problem with this one, so we'll get a little bit of practice with that. Let's go. First of all, I want to give some examples of integers. Integers are positive and negative numbers, so you might have the number 7, the number negative 16, negative 19, 3, 11. Um, when we're talking about integers, we're talking about positive and negative numbers. So when we're adding integers, I just want to do a quick review. This is what it looks like on a number line. If I were adding three integers, negative 3, positive 9, plus negative 5, it would begin like this. I would start at the point 0 and go negative 3. Then I would add 9. So in other words, go to the right 9 spaces. And then um, that would leave me with at the point positive 6. And then I would be subtracting 5 from that or adding negative 5 to that, which would bring me to the point 1. That's the basics of adding integers with a visual number line. Now this lesson is about adding integers without a number line. So if you don't have a number line available, here are the basic rules that you're going to follow. First of all, if the signs are the same, it will look a lot like this. 11 plus 3, that gives you 14. Negative 11 plus negative 3 gives you negative 14. The rule for adding integers when the signs are the same is this. If the signs are the same, find the sum and keep the sign. Or in other words, add the numbers together and leave the sign the way it is. Positive plus a positive gives you a bigger positive. Negative plus a negative gives you an even larger negative. You add the numbers together, keep the sign. When the signs are different, there's a little bit of a different rule. Let's take a look. If I have 9 plus negative 2, that's, again, if you kind of imagine that number line, it's like going 9 and then subtracting 2, which would leave you with 7. If I start with negative 9 and then I add 2, I would end up at negative 7. So seeing these two examples helps us to know this rule. If the signs are different, you find the difference between them. In other words, subtract the numbers. So it, with the first example, 9 minus 2 gives us 7. In our second example, 9 minus 2 gives us 7. All right, we subtract the numbers, and then you keep the sign of the larger absolute value. In other words, are there more negatives or are there more positives? In the first example, there were nine positives and only two negatives, so our final answer would be positive. In the second example, we had nine negatives and only two positives. So you look at which number is larger, decide whether it's going to be positive or negative, and that is where you would get your final sign. Let's do some practice. Here are our three examples the rules are up there on the top. If the signs are the same, find the sum. If the signs are different, find the difference. Go ahead and solve those three, and then we'll take a look at the answers. Hello, welcome back. 14 plus negative 6. That's positive 14, negative 6. We end up with positive 8, because 14 minus 6 is equal to 8, and there are more positives than negatives. Or in other words, 14 positives, only 6 negatives, so our final answer is going to be positive 8. The next question, negative 10 plus negative 2, that will give us negative 12. This is an example where the signs are the same, you find the sum. Add the numbers together and keep the sign. And in our third example, negative 7 plus 15 gives us 8. I must like the number 8 or something, I'm not sure. But in this example, you'll see we had 7 negatives, 15 positives, so we subtract 15 minus 7 gives us 8, and because we had more positives than negatives, our final answer is going to remain positive. Now let's talk about a real life situation or a word, word problem type um, application question.
with this word problem, it's not much of a, not many words. It's filling in a table with temperature change. So here's a table and we have our thermometer on the side. Commonly in real life, when you are adding positive and negative numbers, temperature change is a really good example of that. When the temperature drops, we are adding a negative. When the temperature rises, we're adding a positive. All right, so let's take a look. First of all, I'm gonna fill in the first, um, the first example here. If it starts at 87 degrees Fahrenheit, it drops 5 degrees Fahrenheit, the new temperature would be 82 degrees Fahrenheit. My equation would look like this, 87 plus negative 5 is equal to 82. Now, this is your opportunity to again pause the recording and try this out on your own. I want you to try filling out this entire table. Given a drop is adding a negative and a rise is adding a positive. Try that out, fill it out, come back to the video, and we'll check out the answers together. Hello, welcome back. I hope that you did this table, because it's good practice. 45 degrees Celsius, it raises 2 degrees, it's going to be 47, because at 45 plus 2 is 47. Sounds good. Negative 3 degrees Celsius, dropping 6 degrees, would drop down to negative 9. That would look like this, negative 3 plus negative 6 equals negative 9. Great example of when you the signs are the same, you find the sum. Add up the numbers, keep the sign. 32 degrees Fahrenheit drops by 4 degrees Fahrenheit. It would drop down to 28 Fahrenheit. And that's this is what that would look like, 32 plus negative 4 is equal to 28. And negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit rising by 10 degrees would become 6 degrees, and that would be our addition question there. Negative 4 plus 10 is equal to positive 6, 6 degrees Fahrenheit. That is it for our lesson on adding integers. Some things to remember. If the signs are the same, find the sum. If the signs are different, find the difference. I hope that lesson has been helpful for you. If it is, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Have a wonderful day.